Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. My guest today is Mark Block. We are all friends. And uh, I've already asked you once before if you're an audiophile. We're not gonna, I'm not going to do that again. Don't go there. Um, okay. <laughs> but I, here's what I want to know. Is if you could go back in time to your younger self when you first started playing with Got audio. the hobby. Yeah. What advice would you give yourself? I mean, what have you learned over this journey? What have I learned? Yeah, over the past 40 or All so right. years. Um, one thing I learned, I, and I, I've told you this before, but do not bring a pair of eight foot tall panel speakers home to your wife without telling her first. Okay, good. That's that good was to know. Like, that was my worst day in as, as an audiophile when <laughs> I brought these prize Acoustat 2 plus 2 home to our apartment and my wife looked at them and started crying and um, I said aren't they great and she <laughs> goes they're tremendous and I, and I said yes they're tremendous and listen to them she goes I don't want to hear them they're just and then she broke down oh, oh so anyway so uh, don't do that okay don't do that yeah and so by the way when I bought Magnapans I brought her to the dealer first. Ah, see, you learned. So yeah. other things I learned. Um, you might not like this, but I've <laughs> learned to be more skeptical. Because when I got into this, it was very exciting. Mm. And I truly believe that the sub, you know, in the subjectivists, I also truly believe that it was just a matter of time before somebody figures out what measurements correlate with what we're hearing. And it was almost, it was like when I was a kid and I was into UFOs. And I thought, isn't that going to be great? Because 10 years from now, <laughs> we're going to understand this phenomenon and we're going to have met aliens and it's all going to be wonderful. And then the more you learn about it, the more you realize there is no phenomenon. <laughs> it's weather balloons. And, oh. and it's like, it's explainable. Even the, you know, so I felt that way about high end audio. And I would tell my younger self, don't believe every subjective review. Don't go chasing off at, uh, to buy a new cable every time Harry Pearson likes a different new cable. Okay. Uh, just like chill. It's other things are more important. <laughs> oh, that's it, huh? Yeah. That's a good summation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would just say don't believe uh, subjective reviews. Uh, be a skeptic also with uh, objective reviews or measurement-oriented reviews. Well, that's the problem. Yes, because you can you can take measurements that may or may not that are certainly incomplete, um, and and make a case for something being bad that right. isn't, uh, right. and vice vice versa. Right. So you need to understand them. And some people that do the measurements, certainly John Atkinson, understands what he's doing. Your friend Brent Butterworth, uh, you know, <laughs> what, uh, they, they have experience with this. They understand what they're doing. They understand the limitations. I don't think audiophiles do. So we get into these camps of right. the, the uh, subjectivists and then, you know, Amir. Right. Uh, and, every, you know, everybody's in one camp or the other which isn't, well, I'm sort of in the middle. Right. Well, then there's the people who say, as audiophiles, uh, just use your ears. Just listen and see if you like that right. sound. I really object to that. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot use your ears. You can't. You oh. have to use your ears, but you have to be skeptical of what pops into your consciousness after using your ears. Because we have biases, the placebo effect is incredibly strong and people you know like I've had a hundred of my audiophile friends say oh yeah I, under I know all about the placebo effect but it doesn't happen with me because I understand it okay okay that's just, and that's like if that's what you think you've got it a hundred percent wrong oh then no you don't understand it <laughs> so I'm always skeptical when I hear something um, that I don't understand but my ears tell me that uh, I don't think I'm necessarily right. I'd like to hear it again and maybe hear it again. So, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, if you can't trust your ears and you can't trust objective reviewers, yeah, well, I can't trust my eyes because, you know, like optical illusions, stereo is, is an audio illusion. Okay. Um, if you could trust your ears, we would be perfect hearing machines, and we're not. You know, like number one, we have physical limitations in our hearing, and number two, we have the conscious part of the brain, which is getting filtered information from the senses, mm -hmm. and we don't know what's going on there. Wow. So uh, when, I, when I hear something I like, because the endorphins are going off, and every, uh, that I can trust the fact that I like it, I can't trust what I'm hearing, though. Okay, that's fair. You know what just popped into my head? That you and I did a debate for Audio Magazine, remember? Analog versus digital? Yeah. And remember that great picture? I hope I can find it. That we, we were did a photo shoot. We were at a photo yeah, shoot. I think I had a CD. I, yeah. It was like about the throwing. Yeah, you're you. throwing. And I'm, <laughs> I think, I don't know who's throwing what, but LPs and CDs were flying through, through the air, at least in the picture it was. That was fun. That was, that was fun. Yeah. And I've softened my opinion on that. Oh, about analog. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was very anti-analog there, and I'm not. I I love records now, so I come. I've come around. Despite but not full circle. I like everything now. Oh, that's the, that's the best. Yeah, I like streaming. I like digital downloads. I like my records. Yeah, it all sounds. It can all sound good. How long ago was it that you got your uh, MagnaPan point seven? Uh, I think two and a half years ago. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's a pretty long yeah, period. Yeah, so you've been in there for a while. Yeah. And what was it that made you, you know, consider them? Well, I considered them like a long time ago when they first came out and, and you reviewed them. And it was like, I got to have those speakers. Huh. Um, and I had, you know, small, smallish, yeah. English, all metal driver box speakers with heavy cabinets, the Phil Jones design. Um, what was that brand? Uh, Platinum. Okay. Platinum. Platinum. Um, and uh, but they were getting they were getting old, and I just wanted something mm. different. I went to John Rutan's to hear the point sevens. You 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 get to that point, and you you're 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 moving into the planar magnetic stage as opposed mm -hmm. to the, using the box speakers. Right. Right. And it's worked out. You're you're really happy with. I'm them. I'm happy right? with them. Right. And as you know, I tried some. Ex speaker experiments. I bought some used uh, Infinities, right? Kappa nines and Kappa eights, and I bought uh, Klipsch Heresy threes. Right, the Heresy which, threes, which um, didn't fly for you. Right, the Infinities I just didn't like at all. I heard them at a friend's house and liked them. I got them into my room, didn't didn't <laughs> like them. Um, the Klipsches I liked a lot. Um, my Kids liked them. Ida liked them. It was, you know, it was and like, little. <laughs> and right, and they're on, they're on the floor. Yeah. They're, you know, so they're kind of big and boxy, but they're on the floor. Um, but eventually, I, I don't know. They just have a, they have a sound. They're not uncolored and right. transparent. They have their own sound. And after a while, I just thought, I don't know what the recordings sound like anymore. Oh. I'm not hearing into the recording. It, it's making nice music. I'm just not hearing the recording. And part of being an audiophile, okay. uh, if you just like the music, you're a music lover. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear what the recording is about, then you're an audiophile. Uh -huh. I like that difference. That's good. So um, I just decided they weren't audiophile speakers, and I wanted to get back to that. So I sold them and went back to my Platinums. So then I, I came back around to the Magnapans because they were just sort of in the back of my head mm. for a long time. But you feel like they're going to be around for a while in yeah. your system. Yeah, some sort of Magnapan. I'm kind of uh, OCD about finding the right spot for them. Right. And I know that moving Maggie's more than moving any other speaker I've had there changes the sound. Right two inches of toe in, and it's like a different speaker. I mean, to me, yeah. the sound stage is different, the tonal balance is different, pushing back against the wall. There. So in, 
and I also think that you have to uh, you have to get them absolutely symmetrical. You have to be in an equilateral triangle. You have to get the toe in exactly right. And so unless you want tape on the floor, and even when I put tape on the on the rug and move yeah, them out, yeah. it's it's like well if you get out a tape measure. Yeah, there it's like a half inch off. How did that happen? <laughs> oh, I got to get it right. So anyway, yeah, they stay put. They okay. stay put. All right. I sort of like the idea of having a second speaker as a reference. I think I I told you I got LS50 Metas last fall when um, Kef lowered the price three hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and it's like wow, this is a speaker that Steve Guttenberg likes and Amir likes. <laughs> Like, this must be the, ma you know, like, what is Kef doing? Yeah. Like, this is the magic formula. I got to have these. Right. And, so and, that's, and you're happy with those? I'm more happy with the Magnum hands. Okay. To tell you the truth. Okay. But, well, you know, we can, I, um, I don't know. Do you, the, uh, the Kefs being point source, um, concentric point source, the, the imaging is jaw dropping. I never thought, I mean, Album after album, I'm hearing a sound stage that I didn't know was in the album. So when you talk about hearing into a re recording, mm. part of it is not just the transparency of like I'm no longer looking through dirty glass from the control room. I'm in the studio with the musicians. That's yeah. kind of feeling. Yeah. Um, there's also like the sound stage, whether it's manufactured in the mix or mm. in the purest recording, whatever. I realized that. I'm not getting that with the MagnaPans. Mm. They're doing okay. Mm. They're doing as good as other speakers I've heard. Didn't, but not like a little concentric yeah. thing like that. Um, but I they was do sound really taken with them. But they, but they, but they miniaturize sound, right? It well, sounds I found, smaller. Um, in my case, they're like six feet. I mean, they're they're out from the wall behind them. They're out from the side walls. And they do not sound miniature to me. Like I hear height, I hear width in the right recording. Um, oh, let's say the uh, the Cowboy Junkies Trinity sessions with mm. you know mining yeah. for gold. Yeah, yeah. If you've heard the Canadian, <laughs> the Canadian CD, um, you know, like that the uh, the heating system and the air. Moving right, right, through right. the church, yeah. it's like it's up there. It's up. It's like all around. Yeah. There's no sense of a little miniature. Okay, cam, you right. know, like the hall sound is just everywhere. Okay, so it's not miniaturized. Maybe what I mean to say, only one of those. Okay. I think what he meant, what Steve meant to say, <laughs> is that dynamically smaller. It sounds ah. more limited, more constrained. Yeah. Right. Right. Than, than and I did notice even. that, like, as soon as you start playing them a little too loud, mm. they go from sounding nice to sounding pretty bad really quickly. Mm. And I like to play loud sometimes. Okay. Um, I find the Maggies are also limited. Oh, yeah. You know, both of these, here's the thing, both the Maggies and the, um, and the Kefs are very... Uh, low distortion for speakers. Amir will tell you that. Yeah, he knows. Right. But when you start playing them loud, I don't know, the Kefs sound distorted real fast to me and the Maggies don't. Right. And um, so a couple of weeks ago, I took the Kefs out, put the Maggies back in, and it was like, oh my God. It's like, this is so much easier to listen to. And I'm not so like mm -hmm. worried about how loud I'm playing them. Mm -hmm. Now you now are the using... Maggies will go bad too if you're playing too loud. Yeah, right? but you are using a sub, right? I am using a sub. And I what's have that? SBS, SB2000 Pros. Two? Two. Stereo? Yes, mm -hmm. because, I don't know, I always, like, in my room, I can't put them in the middle between the speakers because right. that yeah. blocks the doorway to the, to the deck. So if I put them off to the side, I don't know, I hear... This whole thing about subwoofers being non-directional <laughs> eh, depends on where. If you cross it over at forty, yeah, yeah, but that's not where you cross it over when you're mating it with a magnet pan. So right. I felt like two did the trick. 
You have a nice turn table. You have the well tempered, right? Yep. An so, old well tempered with the black damped platter and the black turn arm and mm -hmm. all that stuff and, still, still works. Yeah. And the uh, your phono preamp has a built in A to D. No, the phono preamp is a Lino C oh, from okay. channel D. Okay. It has the option of RIAA correction or not. Uh -huh. And I've drunk the Kool Aid from channel D and. I really like that option of having the RIAA done digitally. Okay. So um, I don't have to, but I still do. But you've do tried it. it both ways. I still do it, yeah. I, um, at a certain point, maybe I'll try it again because, mm -hmm. like I said, I, I don't trust my ears. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll try it. But anyway, so it, um, it goes into an A to D. At, uh, it's converted 24192 and played out to the amp. And I, I like it that way because um, I can use my, uh, my iPad or my laptop to connect to, the Mac, to a Mac Mini, control everything. I can switch to vinyl, switch back to files, or um, and I think I told you at this point I'm now I'm using Audirvana instead of Pure Music for for streaming and for general file playback because it really works well with Cobuzz. Uh, uh, very seamless integration with Cobuzz and sounds great. So, uh, but uh, actually I still think iTunes is a, iTunes is a better database. Uh -huh. it, a faster application, easier for me to find things. Maybe that's just because I know iTunes. And pure vinyl, I still prefer to doing it the old-fashioned way with a with a you know. But when you're, which you mean is from your from your rips? What's that? From your rips? Yeah. Well, I can. I also yeah you know, play often, iTunes files. Yes. Yeah. Well, when I when I rip. The LPs, right. then they're 24192 files. Right. In what it, you know, in iTunes or in Audirvana or right. they're because they're files on, right. your, on, your, on right. a hard drive. I just don't want people to think you're listening to iTunes low res files. Right. Okay, it's you know freak people. No, out. if <laughs> <laughs> if you look through the like um, five terabytes of audio on my hard drive. <laughs> I don't think you'll find okay. any low res because you know then you'd be. Booted. It's all Apple lossless wave AIFF and um, red. You know, red book rips are the lowest res resolution. Okay. So, uh, but but your time, just say I'm going to listen to some music tonight. Do you listen to more vinyl than than files? It depends. Yeah. If I'm in a lazy mood, I'll listen to the <laughs> okay. digital. Okay. Um, if I collect up a, enough new record purchases, either new or used, uh -huh. and I, it's like, God, I've had those sitting there for two weeks. I got to play them. Right. Then I then I play the albums. Um, yeah. So oftentimes, uh, it's my it's my mood, and that's. Sure. Uh, Indecipherable. Like, <laughs> um, I don't believe in free will, so it's oh, like, and, so uh, yeah. It's like something in the dark recesses subconsciously tells me to do one or the other, and I do it. Well, it seems to be working. Yeah, so keep right. doing keep doing what you're doing as long as you enjoy the music. It's fine. Yeah, because I'm you know I'm in this mode where I purposely and it's by nature if it, even if I tried my record collection and my CD is not really that well organized it's mm. sort of more or less right mm. and I find that I purposely I've, I discover things as I'm looking for something else that I can't find at that moment I find like three other things that I've mm -hmm. forgotten about so that keeps it going right and right. then at, with vinyl when I find a, a, an LP that I haven't played in a long time I say oh I, I wonder how I'm going to feel about this and I play it and I go, either this is fantastic or this is crap. And the stuff that I'm never going to listen to again, I put it in a separate place that I'm mm -hmm. either going to sell or give mm -hmm. away or something. So, uh, but then I find things all the time that, you know, I wasn't looking yeah, for. Yeah, I, I really, um, 
I don't know. I'm I'm en envious and uh, of, of your ability to <laughs> find new stuff. Oh, thanks. Um, because that's one of the things that I feel, you know, when you get old, um, I don't know. I, d I have a harder time accepting new stuff, and I don't like that about me. Mm. So I want to find new stuff to listen to instead of just going back to uh, the Beatles and the Allman Brothers and Led Zeppelin. Yeah, and it's like comfort food. The yeah. comfort food, right. And it, um, so... I, so you're, I, you know, I, I love your podcast because you oftentimes bring up new artists, which I go immediately to Cobuzz uh -huh. and play. I don't go looking for the record, you know. Mm -hmm. I, that's the great thing about streaming. Yeah, is that's true. If you want to discover things, go there. Oh, go, yeah. you know, go to streaming. Yeah, it's endless. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, that is that is so great that now when someone says, "Hey, this is a great record," where before you have to go and buy it to see if it was if it was for you, and now you just and there it is. And you go, "Oh man, yeah, this is fantastic." Or I don't think so. Right? So you just you can, you know, if you say, "I'm not really an opera person, but maybe tonight I'll listen to some opera things mm -hmm. just to see," you know, sometimes it works, you know. So. Wasn't wasn't going out to buy a lot of opera, but at least now when I'm in the mood, I'll say, yeah, the magic flute. I'll try that too. Yeah, right. So I'm always looking for stuff. But you know, the, for me, the thing about the, the new music is that I I can like it and I'll say, I play it a couple of times, but then I'm on to another new thing and another new thing, and not that much of it really sticks around. So mm. either I'm playing the old reliables. Or I'm listening to new things that a month from now I'm going to forget what they are because I'll be on to another new thing. Oh, so well, that's the tragedy of Steve. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I right because <laughs> like I said I was envious of you, but maybe but maybe, maybe I shouldn't be because yeah. when I find a new record that I like, mm -hmm. it's like I'll play it for months because that's but it becomes comfort food very quickly. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel guilty about listening to old crap. Oh, it's like well. it's new crap, and I love it. And I'm going to play it. <laughs> well, there you go. I think that's a good way to uh, finish this thing off. With you. <laughs> that's a good one. Anyway, thank you, Mark. This was a pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. Hope I uh, was uh, uh, educational. I always like uh, YouTube videos and podcasts where I come away thinking, "All right, uh, that made me smarter," or at least. <laughs> That didn't make me dumber. <laughs> yeah, I think you're in the smarter category. Okay. I, think you, I, I think you did good. So. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, so thanks. Until next time.